welcome to Taking Stock. This is the show where we prepare you for the coming week. I'm Lata Venkatesh and with me is Sonia Shanoi. Well, uh, it's been a truncated but a tumultuous week. Yes, indeed it was. I mean, it was quite a weak week for the market. <laughs> so, the Nifty <laughs> fell about 2.5% and uh, we saw a lot of pharma stocks uh, give up, uh, you know, their gains. So, the likes of Lupin, Sun Pharma were down and out. TCS, of course, was down post its very disappointing numbers. Uh, not very disappointing, but of course, third quarter of uh, subpar numbers that it posted. So, it was an interesting week where the market chose to punish uh, the companies that reported disappointing numbers and did not even reward companies that posted good numbers. Yeah, I think that perhaps is the most debilitating factor of this round of falls. I mean, we saw the market discounting bad uh, good news uh, with practically no gains even in March. I mean, we saw the March uh, 4th rate cut uh, lead to a big fall in the market. I mean, we touched 30,000 and then never looked back to uh, that number again. And likewise, uh, you know, the uh, FDI in insurance uh, uh, news also getting uh, discounted without any gains for the market but it did look like early April the market had got out of that downturn and was charging ahead towards the 8,800 mark with some speed and hurry uh, and uh, after a bout of gaining of the big stocks you know the IT pharma uh, IT for the safe stocks you saw the baton getting passed on even to the bank nifty and at one point it did look like it will it is pulling itself by the bootstraps but this week uh, and especially the last three days has come as a shocker Indescent bank I mean that was the telling point excellent numbers all round growth uh, uh, quality uh, asset quality being improved and uh, guidance that uh, was equally robust uh, was greeted with uh, a peak and a peaking off mm. so that clearly indicates that the market is in a mood to take profit and run away probably expecting that uh, the earnings season is going to bring bad news so take money when we can make it and just two other bad news very quickly uh, the global scene is looking a little bit jittery mm -hmm. US economic data is not very positive and more importantly uh, the Greek problem while it may be ring fenced and will not become the problem it was in 2011 is still showing signs of instability so at the moment the global queues are not looking good and as if all that was not enough we got one FII cell number one day oh yes okay on that note let's actually get uh, two guests on the show first up joining us is Manish Gunwani of ICICI Prudential AMC uh, Manish is right here with us in the studio uh, Manish you've been listening to our conversation uh, it's been uh, quite a disappointing week for the market you know we were making some headway in the past two weeks but most of that was given up this week uh, are you concerned about uh, the way earnings are shaping up not really, Sonia. Uh, I think we've uh, talked earlier on this that uh, we do expect uh, next two, three quarters to be volatile. Um, because if you see, while we have a very healthy macro, uh, for it to translate into earnings growth will take some time. And obviously your valuations today vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, a year back are not that cheap. So, so if you look at earnings in three buckets, global cyclicals, uh, domestic cyclicals and defensives. Global cyclicals have a problem that metal and oil prices are low. Uh, domestic cyclicals, as I said, uh, the macro will take time to translate into earnings for cyclicals. And in terms of defensive, they've already done well last three, four years. So, so the valuations are obviously not very cheap on the defensive side. So it's a kind of very mixed market. Um, I think it will be a challenge to also get a sectoral leadership out here because, mm -hmm. as I said, uh, you have sectors which have done well last three, four years. The valuations are very healthy, discounting most of the earnings growth uh, that's going to happen. And even in the defensive, you're getting a lot of cross-currency impacts um, along with high valuations. Um, on the domestic cyclical side, uh, things are obviously very good from a two three year perspective um, but you're going to get these waves of optimism and pessimism and the valuations again well of course they've lagged defensives but uh, the value is obviously not as cheap as one year back. Okay. Well, as a fund manager, Manish, uh, you will have to be—you'll have to stay invested in, and you can't sit on cash. But for those who can, is there tactically only tactically a uh, space to wait and not rush in to buy, or is it even more than that? Like maybe stay invested in debt because uh, with the good inflation numbers, maybe there is some money to be made in debt, and then you can move the money to equities. The challenge, Lata, there is it's very difficult to time equities. We've seen how the sentiments are changing so rapidly. Um, so I take that point, and uh, we have 
for example, couple of hybrid products like Dynamic and Balance and Vantage, which do what you're saying in terms of rebalancing between debt and equity uh, dynamically. But otherwise, I think if we have a positive view on equities from a two to three year perspective, I think there's reasonable value out there. I think what's happened is your specific pockets of quality, uh, super large caps, which are expensive, uh, the, some of the cyclicals might be stretched. Mm -hmm. But I think you can uh, build a reasonably healthy portfolio kind of trading of valuation and earnings growth over the next two, three years. Okay. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, last week, the interesting part is that while uh, pharma and IT were down, oil and gas made a bit of a comeback with names like ONGC up 6% and Reliance also delivered a very strong set of numbers on Friday. Uh, would you increase your exposure to uh, the oil and gas space, uh, specifically the names that I mentioned? So we do have a reasonable exposure out there purely because of the fact that uh, from a valuation perspective, um, frankly, metals and oil and gas um, are the only two sectors which on historical basis, if you look at long-term price to earnings or price to book bands, um, they obviously are cheap. Uh, so, so we do have some exposure there and I think the key there is the movement in crude because while value is there, uh, what uh, probably kind of um, uh, helped it was the crude move. Because end of the day, a lot of the earnings in that space are uh, dependent on crude price. Hmm. Okay, uh, Manish, how would you approach financials? We had two banks uh, announcing numbers uh, in the week that just went by. Excellent numbers. They got sold off. So, which part of the finance space will you like? So, uh, there are various segments in that. Uh, we do have a very healthy weight on private banks. Um, I know it's, it's a bit of a consensus call, but uh, you can't deny that it, it's a very uh, structural um, story mm. for multiple years to come. Uh, we also have reasonable exposure to PSE banks because I the think... the best performers this week. Exactly. I, I think um, one is they're under um, so obviously um, you have that uh, as an advantage. But if you're going to see a economic recovery over two to three years, uh, we do think that PSU banks will benefit a lot, apart from the fact that the government also seems to be doing a lot of things to improve the governance out there. So I think it's a very interesting space where uh, you kind of uh, buy for cyclical reason, but um, who knows, it can turn out to be a structural story as well. <laughs> The other big uh, talking point last week was CCS, right? I mean, it fell 7% after what was a, a subpar set of numbers. Is that a good uh, buying opportunity? Not just TCS, I'm talking about the entire sector. Um, again, don't want to comment on individual yeah, sure. stocks, but generally, as I said, some of the very um, large caps in the defensive space, we still think the valuations are quite stretched because the absolute markets are such that for them to compound over three, four years um, lo looks like a very difficult task. Okay, so that would, uh, that would be restricted to large cap IT or that would be, uh, uh, you know, you can associate that with large cap pharma as well? Both the spaces, I think uh, what we are trying to do is um, pick stocks. There are certain stocks we think there are um, overvalued in those spaces. There are certain stocks we think there's still reasonable return to be made. No, but as a sector, would you have already in the past few weeks or will you trim uh, the sectoral exposure? Uh, again, as I said, it, it's a very difficult uh, market to navigate from a top-down sectoral perspective okay. because as I said, the quality companies, uh, they're very, very stretched. You take their long-term price to earnings, price to book, they're very stretched. Ideally, you would love to buy them, but uh, the relative valuation comfort is in companies in metals, oil and gas, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll have to mix and match. Um, there's no sector leadership we, we're seeing right now. All right, Manish. Thanks so much for joining us uh, with your view. You have a good weekend. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's take a break. But before that, uh, Reliance was the big earnings that came out post-market hours on Friday. So let's listen in to Anuj with uh, how the Reliance numbers were this time around. Anuj. Solid performance. It's the, you know, for the record, it's the best quarter that Reliance has delivered. Uh, but I would still fall short of uh, delivering, calling this uh, a blockbuster performance because the stock has rallied already, and quite a bit of this could be in the price. Uh, if you take a look at the net profit standalone, that's close to 6,200 crores. Uh, uh, so that's gone up about 23% quarter on quarter is what we have 
for Reliance. The gross defining margin of $10.1 per barrel is at two-year high. The market was going with expectation of about $9.9 per barrel. If you take a look at the other businesses, though, there is a bit of underperformance. You have Pitkem business, which has seen a bit of decline, 3.7% uh, quarter on quarter. Refining business, of course, has gone up 32% because of that gross refining margin, and that's where, what's uh, making up for disappointment everywhere else. Apart from that, if you take, take a look at the consolidated number for Reliance, the net profit is 6,400 6, crore, up 18%. Oil and gas EBIT consolidated down 68% to 330 crore quarter on quarter. That's mainly because of shale business. That was one concern that analysts raised, and that's something that we'll have to talk about later. In terms of uh, other important parameters to watch out for, FY15 EPS of 80 rupees now. Keep in mind, the stock is up 12% this month already. So Monday morning, the consensus was that the stock will still rally because the numbers are quite good. But it will be interesting to see if there is any, any further re-rating based on these numbers because it's already been a market leader and quite a bit of this is already priced in. Also, uh, keep in mind, the standard disclaimer will flash on the screen. Reliance has taken over management control of both TV18 and Network18, the companies that own the channel that you watch. Thanks a lot for that, Anuj. Uh, it's time we took a break, but uh, let's leave you with some more market opinion that we got through the week. We are back at a jiffy. GDP acceleration in FY16 is only 20 basis points, while a sharper recovery uh, we, we are forecasting in FY17. And that's, that's, that's a framework which we've held on for a long time. We have been uh, worried about uh, rural slowdown since early last year, uh, in line with the thesis of inflation surprising positively. Uh, and and that, that thesis is playing out, but uh, the recent data points suggest that the rural slowdown could be even worse than uh, what we had anticipated if you look at two-wheeler sales trends, tractor sales trends, the rural wages trends. Uh, so in that context, we're still maintaining our underweight stance on rural exposed uh, uh, sectoral stocks. Uh, secondly, uh, even on urban consumption, while there was a lot of euphoria in the market uh, second half of last year, uh, our view is that uh, even urban consumption will take time because uh, the fiscal impulse is still negative. India, uh, I think it's run out of a bit of momentum to be honest. I think uh, the budget that we discussed at the time, it didn't really have a big wow factor. There's nothing wrong with the budget. There was a lot of things that, that can turn out to be very positive. Um, but, uh, you know, India's had this huge rally for the past 18 months. I think the Indian market's taking a bit of a pause and it, it sort of needs a, a new catalyst in my view. I think for now, India will probably take a little of a backseat to some of the other uh, big so-called emerging markets like China.